Mark 5 from verse 22. Amen. We have here on the projection as well. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue uh, came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and be begged him, earnestly saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hand on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and the multitude uh, followed him. Uh, verse 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no, no one to follow him except Peter and James and John to uh, the brother of James. And he came to the house of the rule of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who uh, wept and wallowed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why uh, make this commotion weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And he and they ridiculed, ridiculed him, but he then he uh, entered and he took the child by the hand and said to her, Tali Kumi, which is translation, translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and uh, walked, for she was 12 years of age. Let us hear a song of praise.
must be the name of the Lord. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, blessed are though are we are blessed because we are invited to participate in the wedding of the Lamb. The Lord has given us this guarantee. In Jesus, we are able to reach this, this, the means to be eternal. And you who entered here, you can participate in this banquet, this celebration. And this celebration is going to happen for the honor and glory of the, our God. You know why? Because Jesus is coming. The Word guarantees us that Jesus is coming. And we leave this moment. We'll leave the moment of the near. The moment uh, that was prophesied by God. This moment is for us, for the church. His people. That is being called by God to leave the salvation. The text that we read speaks of the situation of a man. living a very difficult struggle in his inside of his own house and the text also says speaks of situations that encompasses our own, own lives here our daily lives there are servants and there are religious there are men that dedicate their lives to the gospel and there are people that are they just attend church and tonight the Lord's gonna show us the difference between the one and the other the importance that we need to have and the seriousness that, that we need to have to carry the gospel of the Lord. The moment that we are living in does not allow us to be plain of church. Name, I uh, like this, I uh, like that one. There's no time for this anymore. There's no time, condition for us to be in debates and conversations and indagations. Which one is bad? Is this? Is that? What is important is that you who entered here. What is important is I who am here, that we have a uh, true experience with Jesus. If it is not this, nothing matters. 
If you don't kneel down, if you don't seek the Lord, if you don't fast and pray, there's no purpose in it. You may have a, a membership card and participating in this denomination. That's not enough. And here we're going to see the situation of this man who was a religious. Jairus. He was a man of God. A devout man that was dedicated to a religion. He was the the main person in the synagogue. He was he took care of things of the temple. He 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 scared the things. He was responsible for those things. There was no one more dedicated than Jairus. But on a day uh, which he saw the situation getting uh, worse in his side of his own house, when he saw his daughter sick uh, to the point of dying, he didn't run to the synagogue. He didn't go to the place that he went, always went. Do you know where he went? He went to meet Jesus. Because he knew that the only one that could resolve this situation inside of his house, the only one that could cure his daughter, was not the organization. was not the environment that you used to go to. No, it was Jesus. He left his daughter there. He left everything behind. She was sick to the point of dying. He went to meet Jesus. And when he met Jesus, we read here that the Bible says that he knelt down in the presence of Jesus. He prostrated it at Jesus' feet and cried for help. And he said, Lord, my daughter is to the point of dying. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. And he heard about Jesus. So Jesus didn't participate in the same religion that he did. Jesus he came to bring something that men didn't know. Jesus came to bring a new teaching. Jesus came to bring uh, the eternal gospel. Jesus came to the world and became man so that we could have access to this salvation freely in Jesus. He didn't come here to proclaim religion, name of church, no. And that man went to meet Jesus. Even he was an opponent. Even though Jesus being something that was the opposition to what he believed, but he went to Jesus' feet. And the word tells us that Jesus quickly came down from the boat and began to, to follow him. And Jesus began to follow him. And on this path towards the house of Jairus, the, monk, the crowd also followed and began to squeeze Jesus. And they wanted to know what was going, what was happening, what was going to happen, the next, next steps, what, where he was going, what he was going to do in Jairus, there. Imagine even the situation of that man left everything at home, the daughter, sick. He humbled himself. He overcame the human barriers. He overcame the religious barriers, the, the, the culture that he praised, everything that he kept. And now he wanted to bring Jesus to his house and people squeezing and bothering. And then comes also a woman that there's a woman that appears that has an infirmity, a bleeding, a constant bleeding, and now she she also are able to uh, overcome the the multitude, and he touch she touched the the clothing of Jesus, and then when she does this, Jesus stops. Somebody touched me. Lord, there is a lot of people touching you. 
I, I, there is a lot of people here. The, the crowd is uh, everybody's touching you. I just know somebody touched me in a different way because virtue came out of me. But brethren, when man goes to meet Jesus with a necessity, with an open heart, with faith, and he touches in Jesus, life comes out of Jesus. It happened to me, it happened to many that are here. It can happen to you to who entered here tonight. You just need to touch Jesus. You just need to go toward Jesus and you see that your life will be transformed. That woman l was left, left that place cured. Jared became to see a blessing. Glory to God. This man, is he's from God. He already began to receive his blessing there. When he saw uh, uh, in the midst of his trial, when he sees the operation of Jesus, that woman was cured. Jairus for sure. He thought, oh, my daughter will be next. And Jesus began to talk to that woman. And Jairus was in a hurry. And Jesus takes his time and he speaks with that woman because Jesus, what he has for us, is not a physical cure. What Jesus has for us is eternal salvation, is the cure of the soul. This suffering that is inside of us, the suffering that medication does not cannot take care of, that doctors cannot do anything about, that, uh, all <coughs> the human resources cannot uh, resolve. Jesus operates, and He speaks to her, my daughter. Your faith saved you. That's it. At that moment, that woman received something that she didn't expect to receive. Because when she touched Jesus, she was already left living. She felt that the, ble the bleeding stopped and he thought, Hey, glory to God. Let me leave before anybody notice, notices. And sees me, I cannot be here. The culture, the Jewish culture, prevented her from being among the people because of her disease, because of her bleeding. She was considered impure and she wanted to leave immediately. And Jesus said, hey, stop. This is not what you came to to get. What I'm giving you is something beyond that. When Jairus saw all of this, this hope for sure in seeing Jesus operating a miracle, and at the same time, concerned about his daughter at home and that difficulty. And when Jesus finishes, finishes talking to that woman, somebody came to Jairus and said, hey, one of his friends and one of them went to Jairus' uh, church. They tell him, Jairus, look, the situation went, got worse. It was grave, but now there's no solution. Your daughter is dead. Don't bother the master. Go home. Your daughter is dead. And so now I can imagine the situation of Jair. It happens often. We're inside of churches. Many of us, and for many years in church, waiting for a blessing, waiting for an answer to our prayers, waiting for God to operate, waiting for a door to open. And how many times somebody comes ahead of us and receives the blessing before of us? Isn't it true? It's horrible. <laughs> you're there, you're waiting for the door to open a door, you pray, you fast, and you go. But there's always someone else, a blessed one, ahead of you and receive the blessing before you. Many times you're praying for the person, for other people, where try, Lord, open the door. You're in that difficulty. God knows. Selling your lunch to buy the dinner. You have to pray for those that come, and you have to pray for others. Give him prosperity, this and that. And tomorrow, the person receives the job. The door opens. The the person comes and to thank God because God uh, opened up a door. It was just it was not a door. It was a gate. And you say, Glory to God. They grinding teeth and say, Glory to God. That's how life is. 
My brother, at this moment, Jairus, when he stopped to conduct Jesus, that's when Jesus began to take Jairus. Jesus began to take Jairus. And Jesus heard, and, uh, when Jesus heard this word, he said to the principal of the synagogue, he said to Jairus, fear not, just believe. My brother, there are situations that nobody helps, no one. Much on the contrary. The people that you think are going to help, they are the ones that create more trouble. You are in your trial and difficult, alone, and you go and you speak to one, to another, right? Hoping that someone is going to give you a word of hope, or, or, uh, a word of encouragement, somebody that you give your strength. And then comes someone like this and said, hey, Jairus, your daughter is dead. Don't bother the, the master anymore. Don't bother the master. My brethren, you know what bothers the master? You know what bothers Jesus? It's not what Jairus was doing. Kneeling down at, at Jesus' feet and praying to the Lord, asking for a blessing for his daughter, blessing for his home. Does, that does not bother God. You can pray to the Lord as many times as you want. You can spend the whole night praying. You can every day speak to the Lord. Knock at the door of grace. This is this doesn't bother God. You know what bothers God? Whenever it is when a Christian does not pray that that bothers God. When you stop praying, in order for so you can complain. When you stop praying, so you can speak with to the brother in the church that the problems you're going through your life, your house, in your intimacy. When you do this, then you bother God. Then you are bothering the master. Because you are not trusting the God, uh, the Lord. It never bothers. The, the prayer of uh, a Christian never bothers God. When you cry out on God's feet, when you pour out your tears, when you open up to God and confess to Him that you are nothing, but He is everything, that He can do all things. And Jesus told Jairus, don't fear not, just believe. You know why? Because for God, there is no uh, problem, small or big. For Jesus, there is no light or darkness. For Jesus, there is no storm or calm. For Jesus, there is no day or night. For Jesus, there is no time. For God, everything is blessing. So when Jesus told Jairus, fear not. Can you imagine Jairus in that situation? After receiving the, the news of uh, the death of his daughter, then Jesus comes and said, hey, don't be worried, just believe. And Jesus prevented anybody from following him. Uh, up until this point, the multitude was following Jesus and Jairus, but now, when the moment became a moment of God, when Jairus left his temp time and entered to God's time, when he left human resources and human's measurement and entered the measure of God and into the space of God, not everybody can enter there. The multitude was left outside. Who entered was who entered? Peter, James, and John, and Jesus, and the father and the mother. And as they entered into the house, Jesus said, No, no one else, follow me. That's it. Now, the, the matter is with me. There are moments in which we need to close ourselves. There are moments in which you just need to trust the Lord. Not to trust your best friend. You know why? Because what you speak to your best friend, it may tomorrow speak to everybody. Tomorrow 
he or she will expose you and you place you in a difficult situation. Don't think that friendship here on this earth exists. Don't say it, because tomorrow you will repent. And Jesus says, when he entered into the uh, house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw the a tumult, you know what the blessing when Jesus entered into a house? You know what is the, the blessing when Jesus is brought to your home? Because he will see things that you can't see. When Jesus saw there, he s saw a tumult. He saw a huge confusion, people crying, people doubting, people crying for sure, a noise, turbulence, and it happens m many times in the house, the homes of the Christians today, many times. Sometimes you enter into a home and you think, oh my God, is this a house of a Christian? I don't believe. Is this a house of a Christian? Like this, this confusion, this tumult, when you, uh, you get there by surprise, it's even better. Sometimes you get there by surprise and you see the situation. But when Jesus comes into our home and he sees the tumult, he sees what is not good, he takes, he removes everybody from the house and he entered saying, what? make this commotion and weep. The child is not dead, but sleeps. This is the word of the Lord. The child is not dead, but just sleeps. You know why? Because there's no death. And you, you're just sleeping. You may be dead, or you may be sick. He will cure in the same way. Because the word, His word has power. Jesus operates by speaking. He operates because his word, his voice is the voice of many waters. But there is no death, there is no cancer, there is no lack of uh, union, there is no bad marriage, there is no bad husband, there is no bad wife, there is no bad son. It doesn't exist. When Jesus entered in the home where Jesus is invited to be, in the home in which Jesus is invited to be a part of, there is nothing that may prevent His blessing. And I know that you entered here tonight, and you leave this place here, inviting Jesus to enter into your house. And that's what we have been doing. We as a church, we have, to, we have been doing it. And Jesus has uh, fixed our homes. He has blessed our homes. Jesus has given us the assurance of and guarantee of assurance of knowing, uh, waking up every day and glorifying Him for uh, remaining warm one day in His presence, going to work uh, um, comfortable knowing that He's protecting our homes. He removed uh, the confusion, He removed the rebellion, He removed fear, removed everything from our homes. He removed death. And now we are resting in Jesus. That's what he did. Don't worry, Jairus. That's what he did. He, s he told your daughter is not dead. But she's sleeping. And they laughed at him. When he had put them out outside, he took the father and the mother and the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. The situation in our lives that nobody else can s can know. I said here at the beginning, why did Jesus bring, brought Peter, James, and John? Because there are situations that we need to bring to the church, not to everyone. Peter, James, John, they, are, they were the pastors of the Lord. There are situations that we need to seek the, 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 the feet of the Lord. There are situations in which we need to have receiving position of hand. There are situations where in which we need to ask for help from the Lord and uh, the rescue is not in the middle of the multitude and those that make noise the help is not around a, a, a multitude but only with those that are part of the body of Christ those that represent the ministry those that are 
closer to Jesus. There were 12 disciples. Jesus just called three, the closest to him. So there are situations in your life in which you can sh for sure bring to the ministry. Because God will give you the direction. God will act um, in the midst of the ministry. And they will pray. They will pay a price for your home. They will pay a price for your health. Prepare a price so that you may for sure have a home in which God is ordaining peace. When he took her by the hand, he said, Talita Kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And the girl, the girl woke up. And the best thing that Jesus can do to a man, and when he picks you up by the hand, because the hands of Jesus are hands that bless. The hands of Jesus, from the hands of Jesus, you have received the care that you need, the comfort that you need. You feel, you will feel secure in the hands of God, of Jesus. Is there no other place that we want to be other than in the presence of God? The hands of Jesus represent this. He took her by the hand, the child arose, and then he said, No one, so that no one would know about her. Don't tell anybody. This blessing, keep it only for you. This miracle, let it remain only with you. And told her, uh, give her to, uh, something to eat. And there are blessings uh, in our life that we receive from the Lord. So that child was 12 years of age. She was weak there. She was sick. She, she died. But Jesus resurrected her. She got up. And now Jesus said, don't tell anybody. And give her something to eat. You know why? Because there are blessings of God in our lives. They need to be maintained. There are blessings, miracles that God operate in your life that you need to preserve, keep. But for this, you need to nourish it. And what it is to nourish the miracle? What it is to nourish the blessing received? How do you do this? How do you maintain this blessing? A life in your heart with prayer and fasting. There are miracles in our lives. There are situations in which God operates in us that we need to keep them and maintain in prayer and fasting. You know why? Because otherwise it falls into forgetfulness. So then tomorrow another trial will come and you forget what, of what God has done. And once again, you will be an unbeliever. But at that moment, he said, give her something to eat. Because we need to maintain our faith. What we have received from the Lord, which is the eternal blessing from God, which is the new birth. That daughter had a new birth. The new birth that we have received in is in Jesus that made us new creatures. Now we are new creatures in Jesus. And for this to be a life in you, you need to have a life in, of prayer, a life of sanctification, a life closer to the Lord, living the environment, everything that of, of culture and human, and truly having a, a true experience with Jesus, define yourself in Jesus, taking care of what is of Jesus, not what is man's, because it doesn't do anything. Man doesn't resolve anything, only God. May God bless us. Let us hear a song.
Praise your name. You're worthy of all adoration. We have hope, Lord. The world is without hope. But we deposit all our hope in you. Blessed be your name. Because everything you have done for your for everything that you ought to do in the name of Jesus. My brethren, the Lord gave many gifts as as we were praying for the service. The Lord has shown that 
There were angels guiding the praises. They were conducting the praises. They were participating with us. The Lord also showed a woman that entered here. The Lord has given her a new opportunity for her to, at that moment, to have the assurance that her name is written in the book of life. Amen. The Lord has shown also two families that entered here in the service. And tonight the Lord is blessing them. <coughs> Give them a complete blessing in their home. Putting everybody on the same level. There's no there's there's some, some problem. Father, mother, mother better. Uh, father is better, the older son is better, the younger is better. There's nothing like this for the Lord. Because for God, we are all sheep of the Lord. Where well, Jesus is our good shepherd. So God here is giving to this family this understanding that they need to have unity. let go of the differences of what is this world the things of this world together grow in the Lord together seek the Lord family is something that is eternal God loves the family God has a project for the family he has a project for you and for your home for your for your marriage do not give up do not give up do not stop praying to the Lord in favor of your home and your marriage. And also there was, there was a woman that entered here with difficulties. She was feeling a, a responsibility very great in carrying or the problems in her family all by herself. She is the one who has had this commitment to pray, to spend loses lose night of uh, sleep praying to the Lord but tonight the Lord is promising a blessing a complete blessing you know why because you're praying to the Lord because you're faithful to the Lord your definition is in Jesus it's not in anybody else and that's why tonight you the Lord recognizes this and promising you this victory fear not but believe there's no death because the Lord has already been victorious against death. Amen. Let's pray finishing. Lord, we want this moment to glorify your name for the month that has finished, for the month in which, Lord, we were able to pray to the Lord, visit their homes and receive a great blessing each visit. We praise the Lord for everything that you have done in our behalf for the provision for the sustenance for the comfort for the consolation for your word Lord that always comes at the right time for the advices from the Lord for the direction of the Holy Spirit Lord we have we don't have words to express what we feel Lord but we want still glorify your name because you have helped us up until now because we can say that we and our families serve you and it's with joy that we have chosen to have a God like you God we praise you receive our adoration and continue to bless each family here represented give a blessing to the family members that could not come here to the service tonight even those that have not defined their lives in, in Jesus and those that are undecided, those that are connected with religion or the things of this world, we ask that your angels at this moment deliver them, Lord, and that you may give them um, a true meeting with salvation with Jesus. This is our prayers, church, in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace, the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of this Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We come to the end of our service. If you desire a prayer, 
We are here placing ourselves at your disposal. We thank those who are visitors. We invite you to come more times. We have service Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. The name of the Lord is being glorified. Our hope is in the Lord. And I say peace of the Lord to everyone.